today we're going to be going over oil tankers. I cover tankers periodically. I have an investment in Nordic American tankers. NAT is the ticker and it has not been doing so well over the past month. It's down by 13% over the past month over the past five days it's down by 4% flirting with the $3 mark. And we're going to be talking about whether oil tankers and specifically NAT is a buy. So thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Adam and on this channel we talk about stocks, finances, cryptocurrencies as well as my investments. And my investment in NAT is not doing so hot as we can see here. It's actually my second worst position. I'm down 924 US dollars for a negative 46% uh, loss of my investment if I sold right now. But that doesn't take into account the dividends I've received, but they have been paltry at best. Uh, they were like two cents per share. So I received seven dollars in the, for the past like two quarters in terms of their dividends. And I think the reason why uh, NAT and in general oil tanker stocks are down lately is because of this. OK, so the spot rates are not looking too hot. Uh, and just this past week, VLCC, which carries the most amount of crude, 2 million barrels, the spot rate was only 3,100 this week. That means if you wanted to put, if you're an oil company, you wanted to put oil on a VLCC, it only cost you $3,100 per day. Suze Max carries 1 million barrels of oil, uh, would cost you 3,800. And Aftermax, which actually carries the least amount of oil, uh, half a million barrels, would cost you $7,000 and 100, $7,100. So it's sort of like an inverted pattern. Usually VLCC carriers actually, um, they charge the most because they carry double the amount of oil followed by Suze Max and then Aftermax. But I think that we see this inverted trend here because there's a higher demand for shorter shipping routes when it comes to crude oil right now, okay? So uh, we're not seeing a lot of long distance, I guess, voyages. And a lot of the VLCC carriers are opening up right now because during the pandemic they were used for floating storage and now i think that we have just an oversupply of tankers especially the large ones because they're not being used to to store oil just floating around uh and we're seeing this decrease in the race and i mean this is like a pretty pretty crappy um earnings for a tanker right now so i think that's why you see nat is not looking too hot in terms of its share price and I mean, they say that the spot rates have nothing to do with earnings. Uh, however, there is a correlation, okay? Generally, uh, the spot rate earnings tend to signal strength or weakness in the tanker markets. And uh, this is all in contrast to the price of crude oil, which is nearing its, basically at its one year highs. Uh, its closing price was $74.63. And we can see this trend, this one year trend of crude oil Basically, its peak was around $75, so it's basically at its all-time, not all-time highs, but at its uh, the highs that it's been. And even over the past five years, it's even higher than it's been uh, in 2018, in June 2018. So, I mean, this is a really nice recovery for oil, and you'd expect that the tanker rates would do the same, uh, but no. And I think, again, part of the reason is because there's a whole fiasco going on with OPEC, which is the oil cartel. And there's basically a lot of headlines running around and there's a dispute among OPEC members that's causing major uncertainty in the oil market, especially as gas prices continue to tick up. So basically what's going on is the UAE, United Arab Emirates, blocked a plan introduced by its neighbor, Saudi Arabia, that would boost oil output in stages. So right now they're in a deadlock, the UAE and Saudi Arabia, in terms of what to focus on when they're increasing oil production. And what this means for tankers is when you're not going to increase oil production, there's less oil to transport around. And when there's less tr oil to transport around, uh, you don't need, I mean, you don't need oil tankers, right? Um, so the UAE wants to increase its own production by more than the Saudi plan allows for. So talks fell apart and oil prices hit a six year high earlier this week because uh, oil right now is the boost in oil production is is not coming as expected. 
Uh, and so the UAE strategy is envisioning a future with more renewable energy and stricter climate focused policies. So it wants to pump and sell as much oil as it can now to snag as much market share as possible when demand hits its peak, which is estimated to be around 2030. So that's also, of course, another concern, a long term concern of the oil tanker market is eventually we're going to hit, hit peak oil demand before renewables start to take over and uh, that renewable energy infrastructure deepens. But until then, which is again, it's expected to be around 2030, oil is still going to be the dominant energy source. OK, so uh, again, this deadlock is not good for the oil tanker markets because production of oil is not increasing as expected. And I mean, there's other uh, websites that basically say the same thing. The heart of the issue is uh, that it's roiling around the entire oil sector, the growing belief that peak in oil in demand for crude is not so far away. All right, so that's another thing that's just taking NAT share price down along with other oil tanker stocks. As you can see, Frontline down 4% over the past five days. Over the past month, actually not bad, down 1%. And Euronav, which is like the king of tankers, it's down by 1% over the past five days and about 5% over the past month. So NAT definitely seems a bit more volatile when it comes to the share price. And if you're more in for a swing trade type of... Uh, type of deal, NAT actually looks pretty attractive right now and I'll show you exactly why. So if you go onto the charts for NAT, uh, these are daily candlestick charts. We're looking, I think, at the six months here. Uh, and of course we can see we received a dividend. And what has been happening, I'll just do a little doodle here, is we can see that the price of NAT has sort of been falling along the line here of the lower 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 Bollinger Band, which is two standard deviations below the 21 day moving average. Uh, and generally what you wanna do is buy when the candles are riding uh, the lower Bollinger Band and when you think it's hit its peak and you see a slight reversal. So uh, we can see here that this green candle on Friday, it bounced nicely off of the lower Bollinger Band and so, which means we could see a general reversal towards the upper Bollinger Band uh, and hopefully towards the 20 and 51 day moving average in the purple here. And so now might not be a terrible time for a swing play if you wanna pick up a few shares of NAT because generally that's what happens. It rides the lower Bollinger Band uh, and you see one or two green candles and it then goes back up towards the upper Bollinger Band here. So what I'm saying is you could easily buy now maybe potentially wait if it goes back down to $3 a share and then sell when it hits $3.50 per share for a nice little swing trade. And I'm actually considering doing that. And if you'd like to follow me on Patreon to see my real time buys and sells and how I make money, uh, you can definitely check that out and you can get in on this swing trade with me. But uh, yeah, if you're looking at the relative strength index, it's at a 34, so pretty weak, but I like how you see this little upwards, uh, upwards little deflection point and it's starting to move up. So that is generally a bullish indicator, although we can see in the MACD, uh, it still just signals a, a bearish pattern. So uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. Maybe wait a few days before uh, getting in on NAT for a swing plate, but it does look decently optimistic. So my, my final thoughts on NAT and the oil tanker market, I mean, I'm not going to be selling my shares NAT consistently pays out a dividend, even though they're losing money hand over fist. Uh, and I think that, again, since we're not near the event of peak oil and just as what I'm thinking is just as it took a while for crude to to decrease production. Right. So, uh, you know, they they couldn't just shut off the wells uh, they to to dampen down oil production. They can't just like turn off everything. So it took a while for oil production to finally go down. And just as it takes a while to for oil production to go down, I think it'll take a while for oil production to ramp back up. And what this means is that we see an increase in the price of crude oil. And this could, could continue for time. Some people are actually predicting that it could reach $100 per bar barrel, but I think when the price of crude reaches $100 per barrel, per barrel, there'll be so many players who want to get in on this play. 
and start increasing their output, especially when uh, the price of, of getting a barrel from the sands in Canada or in the States is much higher than in the OPEC type countries, okay? So it doesn't cost a lot to produce a barrel from Saudi Arabia, but it costs a lot more to do that in Canada. So I think what happens is a lot of oil companies are gonna say, well, okay, I'm gonna start in increasing my uh, production of crude because now the barrel of oil is at $100 per barrel. So I'm gonna be earning a lot more money than when it was at, uh, you know, $30 a barrel. So that's, that's my idea and once you, once you start increasing oil production in countries other than OPEC, then I think that's when NAT and other uh, other players in the tanker market will start to become profitable. But that's just my take. Uh, again, I, I don't think that this is the end of NAT. I thought the spot rates would go up by the summer way more than we have seen them, and that definitely is a disappointment, and I was definitely wrong on that. Uh, but again, I think that we could definitely see a reversal. Uh, coming into the fall and potentially the winter. We'll just have to wait and see how this plays out. So those are just my thoughts. Uh, thank you so much for being with me here today. If you would like to, please check out the Discord where we talk about everything related from tankers to other stocks to um, other other investments as well as my buys and sells. Right now I'm really into Alibaba and Baidu uh, and I think it's a pretty damn good deal. So uh, yeah, check that out if you'd like to please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one guys, peace.